Welcome to Lexington Park Baptist Church. God is on the move. So, uh, girls for glory, success tonight. We start making our way over here to the worship area. And let's go ahead and prepare our hearts for worship. Let's say a word of prayer. Please join me. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for tonight. Thank you for another beautiful day you've given us. Thank you for this just awesome opportunity to come out here to worship outdoors. And Lord, we just thank you for this freedom we have. And we thank you. Uh, Lord, for an opportunity, again, to lift our voices to you. We ask you just to throw our, throw our praises. God, we pray tonight as uh, we go through scripture reading and prayers and to recognize our graduates this evening as we lift up your word from John 15. We just pray, God, that you will be blessed through all that we will do here tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's sing. Rejoice. 
Hide your face from my sins and blot out all of my iniquities. Create to me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will be converted to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, the God of my salvation. Then my tongue will joyfully sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice, otherwise I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. By your favor, do good to Zion, build the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in righteousness and sacrifice. In burnt offering, in whole burnt offerings, then young bulls will be offered on your altar. One more thing, Isaiah 66, 22. Thus says the Lord, heaven and earth, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where then is a house you could build for me? And where is a place that I may rest? For my hand made all these things. Thus all these things came into being, declares the Lord. But to this one I will look. To him who is humble and contrite in spirit, and who trembles at my word. May God bless the Lord. with him we will fall and we will believe the lies that constantly creep up in the body of Christ the lies that constantly try to tell us who we're not the things that try to write what is not true things that try to make us believe things that you did not say you call us holy blameless and a brother approach. You called us that. So anything outside of that is a lie. Whether it came from a loved one or someone who think they care. If it's not of love, it is a lie. So I thank you, Lord, for giving us the truth, for being the way, the truth, and the life. Giving us an example to live by. I pray that we constantly look toward 
but you and not our opinions. I see what's going on and you see what's going on. And everybody is always asking where you are. If God so loved the world, why he always allowed bad things to happen, good people. But that's so far from the truth. Because it's not you that's causing it, it's the evil that we constantly turn our backs to. Church, we have to rise up and be the love that the world is missing. Be the love that is patient and is kind. Be the love that knows how to forgive in the midst of injustice. To know how to pray for somebody and not because of somebody. To know how to intercede for those who are lost and not prejudge them because of their actions. If that was the case, we would all be wiped out. But you were patient with us. You was patient with each and every one of us. And I thank you for that. So I pray the same patience with each and every one of us. Even though we make mistakes, you do not look down upon us and judge us first. Your blood is a gift. So before we continue to worship, a few things. Uh, had Joe read that scripture on being cleansed before God and asked Brian to pray tonight. Because on July 28th, in this parking lot, we won't meet at 7 o'clock, we'll meet at 6 o'clock. There'll be no girls for glory. No offense, guys. Um, but we will gather with the churches of St. Mary's County in this parking lot. Red, yellow, black, and white. And we're going to meet here for a prayer rally of love, of unity, and of freedom. And we're going to walk from here across the crosswalk behind you, if you didn't know that. And we're going to walk into the park, which now has an entryway right across the street from us by the Yellow Sun. And we walk straight through there, and it goes right into the park, and it's called Lexington Manor. And then we go into, right by Linda's Cafe, where we're going to pray at the Freedom Monument. And you're going to see brothers and sisters standing in unity, not doing it like the world, but doing it like God. And the world is trying to do things with human logic, but God is the only one who can change a human heart. So when we come together in unity and in love and freedom, all the churches that have been planning this, red, yellow, black, and white, have come together with that one purpose, is to unite the body of Christ in love and in a focus on freedom for all people. So I hope on July 28th, or June 28th, excuse me, that you will be here at 6 p.m. and join us for that prayer rally. Also, June 21st, which is next week, we'll have our normal activities, Girls for Glory. And then at 7 p.m., we'll recognize also our fathers, and it's BYOC, Bring Your Own Communion. So we will be taking the Lord's Supper here together, so bring your own communion. We won't pass plates. If you really forget it, we will have some that you can come get off of the table, but we, we won't pass it around that night. So please bring your own, BYOC, bring your own communion. Grape juice, grape juice, grape juice. Everybody say grape juice. Grape juice, thank you. No fermenting it outside, none of that stuff. Grape juice. We do Mr. Welch's communion here at Lexington Park Baptist Church. All right, so June 21st, please bring your own communion. And that's Father's Day. At Girls for Glory, we will have dogs, hot dogs for hot dads. So if you are a hot dad, Brian, come on. You can have a hot dog on the grill on the church. So we hope you come out for that. So that's my announcements. Let's pray. A lot of activities. We're still the church even though we left the building. Amen? All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you again. Thank you for already the word that's been read. Thank you for the, the prophetic prayer of proclamation over your people. Thank you, God, that we can come before you and, and, Lord, try to still be the church that's in movement, the church that's your hands and feet in the midst of this virus and the events and activities that are going on in our culture. Lord, may we be steady on you. Lord, we pray that you give us direction, that you guide our steps, 
pray for Bishop Clinton and Bishop Spence and Pastor Nestor and Pastor Jay and myself as we plan the events for June 28th. Pray that the churches will come together in unity and that Father God, uh, Lexington Park Baptist Church will be a part of that, be a part of a movement of you to bring love and unity and freedom to our community. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to worship you, continue to sing you praises. May you be on in Jesus' name. Amen.
our graduates as this morning Pastor Joe cried over Zach and Caleb and made Darling cry and then she realized it was fake and uh, so tonight uh, we're gonna recognize those graduates they didn't get to walk across the stage with the crowd so tonight we may not be thousands that would have been in the auditorium or hundreds that would have been in the auditorium with them but let's be loud and proud of the graduates the high school graduates who are honoring tonight as they come up here and they get to walk on a stage they get to get recognized pastor joe's going to say a few words and give them the bible and so just want to to prepare your heart for that as we celebrate this special time a lot of people lost a lot of things over the last three months some people lost jobs some people lost loved ones you know and some people lost stuff like we take for granted graduations, dances, school plays, you name it. And you know what, they may sound trivial, we may say get over it, it's a big deal. Imagine when you were that age, if you lost that thing. So this is our way of honoring you all tonight. The graduates wish we could do more, but at least we can come out and celebrate you with you this evening and, uh, and, and lift you up and encourage you. So I know there's some prayer requests. I know that the Krennic family has asked for prayer. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's Laura that's going to the hospital, she had surgery, so we need to pray for her. If, if you just have a prayer request, something that needs this, raise your hand, God will know what it is. Raise your hand and we're gonna pray over those things. Anybody else, prayer requests, going up to God. Okay, let's lift these things to the Lord. Uh, Father God, you see every hand that's raised with a special concern upon their heart. Lord, we lift up Lord to you, Lord. We don't know what the situation is, but that she was rushed to ER tonight after surgery from this past weekend. So, Lord, we just pray for her. Lord, we pray for all these concerns uh, of your people. Lord, we lift them up to you. Lord, we know that you care. And so, God, we, we can come to you because you're a God that loves us and cares for us and we're concerned about every aspect of who we are. Lord, so we just pray for these concerns now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Pastor Joe. All 
All right. Uh, so it's, it's such a joy to be able to con congratulate our graduates. Ty, as I call your name, uh, if you can come on up, we have a gift for you. And then just kind of circle around in front of the uh, picture there so we can all stare at you awkwardly and take whatever pictures we want. Um, and there's no formality to this, so if you, if you want to dance across here, here, here's your chance. What you couldn't do in your high school graduation, you could do here. Well, within limits, okay? Within limits, of course, but, you know, just come on around and, uh, and stand in front of the picture there, um, or the sign there, rather. What I did want to say, too, um, in light of everything going on in our nation, you know, we, we see, we, we are called to rise to the occasion. Um, but perhaps a helpful reminder is that um, no matter how great the occasion was, it still never compares to all of the years of parents praying over their children, of, um, of giving them instruction, of watching over them, um, just pouring into their lives. And that's, that's actually what graduation symbolizes, is, is the amount that they do over the years. That situations like today can never compare to that type of influence. Uh, and so while, while you're concerned and praying over things that are happening today, remember the daily grind of living in your world that actually transforms and changes people. Uh, and we know that has transformed and changed our graduates, and we're praying for them as they continue to grow into the future. And just in light of that, I want to read a uh, uh, favorite passage of mine, which I've now lost. In Philippians chapter 2, Paul says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation before you travel. For it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. And so Paul is talking about this process that goes on for those who are called to Christ. It doesn't stop at that single calling, but it continues on uh, into growth and to maturity as you work out your salvation. And he says the end goal of that salvation is what we see a little bit later in the passage. Um, but this is, my, this is my prayer for our graduates today. That you may be blameless and innocent, children of God, without punishment, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life. With that, let me throw out my hands. Caleb Arnold.
want to take a moment to pray over our graduates. Father, we thank you so much uh, for these uh, young men and young women. Uh, Father, we just pray for their future. I pray that we be grounded uh, both in your word and in the influence of the Holy Spirit uh, as they work out their salvation in life uh, for your glory and honor. Father, we pray that all the influences that have been given uh, poured into their life by their parents, uh, their teachers, by those within the church. Father, I just pray that it would bring forth great fruit in your life. Uh, whether it be uh, in success in the world, Father, we pray especially that it be success that is honoring and glorifying to you. Father, we just thank you so much for them uh, and just praying and letting them know that we are still here in our life and desire to, to care and to be there for them. What do y'all want to preach tonight? They look at him walking away. Look at look at that man. Look at that. All right, let's let's lift up our Bibles. Get your word of God out. Let's say this together. I, I, I'm not going to even say it. I'm going to listen to y'all. I'm going to start you off. This is my Bible. Amen. I just got to make sure you guys still have that memorized. Making sure you guys got that down. All right, let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for this evening as we can come and declare your word. Lord, we thank you for the graduates that we've recognized, the, the hard work that's gone into to seeing them graduate and launch them into to your world. And Father, we just pray many blessings over them. Lord, pray as we honor your word tonight as we lift it up, that you will speak to your people's hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're going to be in John 15. Last week we talked about bearing love, and tonight we're going to talk about bearing the fruit. So, verses 1 through 8, listen to the word of the Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. Every branch in me that does not produce fruit, He removes, and He prunes. Every branch that produces fruit, so that it will produce more fruit. You are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Remain or abide in me, and I in you. Just as a branch is unable to produce fruit by itself unless it remains on the vine, neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit, because you can do nothing without me. If anyone does not remain in me, he is thrown aside like a branch and he withers. They gather them, throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you produce much fruit and prove to be my disciples. The God of the blessings is holy word. So listen, tonight as we talk about this, I want to just get the characteristics of this text down for you. So first of all, Jesus is the true life-giving vine. If we are not connected to Christ, we are dead. So if you're in here tonight and you're living life on your own, you're trying to produce whatever fruit you want in your life and just live life your own way, and you're not connected to Christ, abiding or remaining in Him, you are not a part of the vine, therefore you're not even a branch. Now notice this, the gardener is who? The Father, the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is taking care of the vineyard. Christ is the vine, and then you, you and me, the church, Individual disciples, we all make the branches up. So we are connected to Christ, and Christ is then bearing life into us so that our branches can produce fruit. And the Father goes around, and He takes care of the garden. So the Father is going to take care of pruning us, pruning the church. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I, try, to, I try to grow a garden every year. Sometimes it succeeds. Last year, the Japanese beetle bugs got all my broccoli, got all my tomatoes, and almost killed all my cherry trees up front. And then the deer ate all my peaches. 
So this year it was war. So I got to spray out and I sprayed. And I sprayed that nasty smelling deer stuff all over my fence, all over my yard. Now, as of this morning, I still had peaches. As of this morning, I still had tomatoes growing and I actually have some green peppers growing and, and it looks good. And you know what you have to do with the tomato? You have to like prune it, right? You, you cut off some so that you don't get, it doesn't get overwhelmed and you can produce more fruit. God wants to do that with us too. He wants us to grow. He's going to make sure. He's going to do. Listen. He's going to go keep the deer, the wolves away. In our case, he's going to do everything he can. The Father's going to protect that vineyard so that you can be connected to Christ, so that you can bear fruit. All right. And let me tell you what. God the Father is a much more better vineyard taker than me. And he's got all the protection you need so that you can bear fruit. And Jesus has got all the life that you need to bear fruit. Amen? So let's remember who we are in connection to him. That we must remain in him. We must abide in him. And our goal is to produce fruit. To produce good things for God the Father that he wants in our lives. That Jesus wants to go into us. The same things that Jesus does that he did when he walked the earth. He wants to do it through me. We need to believe that. That's what abiding and remaining is supposed to produce. So the first thing is the pruning. How is God pruning you? Over the last three months, I've said this comment and it offended someone. I'm going to say it again because if it offends you, you probably need to repent. So listen to me after this, these tunes get going. I don't want to bear that fruit. Amen? So listen. If you are focused on all the activities that are going on in the world and they're sucking you dry and you're so focused on this virus, are you so focused on the violence, are you so focused that you, 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 you've kind of lost sight of Jesus, you've missed it. God is in the midst of right now. I, whether it's God's judgment, but also God calling us to repentance, God calling His church to rise up, in the midst of when the world called us non-essential, we are essential people of God. We are the people of God, and we are called to bear fruit. And we are called to give testimony to what Jesus has done in our lives, whether there's a virus or whether there's violence, whether we're persecuted or whether we're martyred. We are to give glory to God by bearing fruit for His name. Amen? So whatever's happened in our lives, the struggles we've had over these last three months, I, I don't know about you, but me personally, I've drawn closer to God. I've tried to focus my life on Him. I, pre I preach five sermons a week. I've never done that in my entire life. I now know how Martin Luther feels. Kind of, Pastor Joe, a little bit, maybe. But, uh, I mean, preparing five sermons plus two sermons on a Sunday now, I've never done that before. I'm in the Word constantly. And I'm, I'm, I'm spending time with the Lord. My family's drawn closer together. We spend time, we, we eat our meals together. Listen, we ate Chick-fil-A for the first time yesterday. That's a miracle for three months. Come on, you know? That is a miracle. And you know what? The Chick-fil-A was not that good. It was not as good as I thought it was going to be. And I'd much rather enjoy having the meals that we've had together and the time that we've had together. Yet, listen, it's not been perfect. There's been some drama. There's been some intense moments. But it's been good. And it's drawn closer to God. I hope you have done the same thing. I hope you have grafted yourself in and gotten closer to that vine, which is the life-giving power, which is Jesus Christ. And I pray that you've taken advantage of this moment. And if you've not, guess what? It's never too late. It's never too late to seek God. And the Bible tells us to seek Him to find Him. So if you are in need of being closer to Jesus or if you're just overwhelmed right now and you've kind of missed Him through all this, you've been so focused on what the world's been doing, it's never too late to turn to Jesus. Amen? So make sure that you're turning to Him right now. Maybe the church is also pr being pruned. Do you know that God wants our church to bear fruit? Now, I didn't count the cars, but every week, uh, every week I've counted, there's been at least 100 cars that have driven by while we're doing this. You know when we're in the building, they don't even know we're in the building? They, they don't know. When people drive by now, they at least see us. Amen? So not only are we out here in fellowship, seeing one another, being able to worship together and worship our great God, we're also bearing testimony to Jesus Christ. 
I think it's a powerful thing that we're supposed to do. So God may be pruning us. We need each other. If you have not learned during this time, what do you appreciate about church? You should have asked that question of yourself. Now I know, I know all of you said the preacher's sermons. Only one left. That's good. That's good. Praise God. I know that's number one on your list, right? Let me tell you what I think number one on the list is. We need each other. We know that we're connected to Jesus and we're connected to each other. And, you know, pastor just added bonus. Amen? So, <laughs> thanks, brother. I feel the man. So, we're together. You know, I know you've heard this. Sean and I talk about this. We hate those commercials. We're in this together. Have y'all heard that? How many times have you heard that? We're in this together. You know it's true in church. We're in this together. God has called us not to be lone branches out there doing our own thing. He's called us to be connected to the vine, getting the life from Jesus, going out and doing what He's called us to do, and be a part of His kingdom, be a part of His church. So if you're here tonight, I pray you are one of those branches. And I pray that our church, Lexington Park Baptist Church, that God will prune us so we can bear more fruit. Listen, when we come back, and, and I, I've, I've shared some of this, if you paid attention on Word of Encouragement, the 14 of you all that watch that every day. But I know all the other 200 you watch it later at night. I know how that works. That's okay. You're busy. So, but if you paid attention to that, this is not about us doing programs. Did you know that Jesus didn't care about our programs? I know Pastor Joe and I, because every week the staff meets and they hear this all the time and we, we're going over, you know, when we come back, what's it going to look like? We actually don't know what it's going to look like. But you know what? If we let God prune us right now, when we come back, we're going to bear more fruit than we ever would have before this started. Amen? Because if God is pruning us right now through this, preparing us, when we come back and we start to figure out what, what, are, what are small groups going to look like? What's worship service going to look like? Are we going to have an 8.30 service and an 11.30 service and a 10 o'clock digital and we're going to do that for a while? I don't know. What's Wednesday nights going to look like? I don't know. We may meet every night of the week. There might be home groups. We have no idea what God's going to do. But I want you to prepare your heart. Are you connected to the vine? I said, are you connected to the vine? If you are, and God prunes us and moves us in a new direction, we are going to bear more fruit than we were before this thing started. Amen? So let's have open hearts, ready to let God move the church leadership and move the church maybe in new directions. It may be, we may keep a lot of the same stuff. You know, so it's not about replacing it, but maybe there's things God wants us to do a little different. Or maybe he wants us to focus on something new that we've never done before, like outdoor worship. I know, listen, this is, this is the biggest mistake. We've done this three weeks now, I've already had some of you come up. I like this so much, we should do this again next summer. I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, we just started. You know, it's like a Baptist. Now we started three times, now we can't let it go, amen? So maybe this will be something we do every summer. I have no idea. But whatever God wants us, be prepared for that. So abiding and remaining in God. Did you know that God created you to have intimacy with Him through Jesus Christ? You are created to have a relationship to remain in Christ. To abide in Christ. To live with Christ and for Christ. He's created you for that. He wants you to be connected to Him. And this is, this is a beautiful thing. Remain in Him and He will remain in you. If we remain as a church in God, He will remain in us. God will never leave us. Jesus has connected us. In fact, the Bible speaks in terms like this. Because we're Gentiles, we're not Jews. We are grafted in. God made space for us. He made sure we're a part of that vine, that we will grow with Christ, that we have intimacy, that we're, to, we're dependent upon Him. That we have, listen, you can do nothing, it says right here, without Him. You can do nothing without Him. Do you live your life like that? I'll be, listen, I'm your pastor, I'll be honest. There are times that doesn't cross my mind. I'm just going about my business and I go, oh, said, Jesus, I need you. Now, let's be honest, because listen, I, I, know, I know all of you out there, you do that too. But the, we need to make sure that we're remaining in Christ and abiding in Christ, and we realize we can do nothing, nothing that's going to last for all eternity without Him. So let's make sure during this time, He's given us a Selah, which means a pause. 
This, this has given us a time as a church to pause and do new things and listen to it pivoted beautifully. The one thing I give credit to the church at large is not that we changed how, how we, our message, we didn't change our message, the message has not changed, but you know what, we changed how we did things. Do you know how hard that is to get Baptists to totally change? Do you know how that hard that is to get anybody to change? I mean, imagine what this world has just done in the last three months, but just focus on the church. We had totally pivoted to find a way to continue to worship creatively. Isn't that pretty awesome? I think that's awesome. Now, I know some of you, I know you don't like seeing people on the digital screen. I don't either. I like seeing your faces. I like seeing your mask too, some of you. Some of you, are, see, some of you are rule followers, right? Like my wife, my wife's a rule follower if you didn't know that, all right? So am I, I'm a rule follower. So. So all those things that we do, we, we've gone through this process and we've been cooperative with the government, we've been cooperative with church leadership, and I want you to know that I think God is happy with that, but I'm ready to move on, are you? I'm ready to move on, are you? But guess what, we can't do that until God says we move on. All right, we gotta make sure that everything's right, we still have to make sure that, we listen, we're still going to practice like the social distancing and all that stuff, but we're going to continue to move on. And as God opens up things, we're going to open up and we're going to move with God. Because God is on the move. Oh, yeah. Jeremiah, God is on the move. Oh, yeah. I didn't hear you over there, so I'm just making sure you're awake. There you go. So we need to remain in God so God can then give us the life power that we need and direct our lives. And we can produce more fruit for Him. Now I want to talk about this, can't miss this part. Last year when the, when the deers ate all of my, my peaches, my heart sank. It really did. And guess what? I went to Amish country with Greg Mabry and I bought a brand new peach tree, so I'd have two peach trees, and they ate the entire tree. There's two leaves on it this year. So maybe it'll come back. Man, it, it broke my heart. I thought it withered away. You know, God talks about being a withered branch in here. He doesn't want you to wither away. You know, uh, if that tree does die and it doesn't bear leaves and it loses, loses all of its life, I've got to cut it down and burn it. And that's what Jesus says about us. If we're this branch that just refuses to bear fruit or we, we refuse to be connected to Christ, we're like a branch that's withered away that's worthless that will come be picked up and, and burned in a bundle. Listen, I don't want anybody to be like that, so I'm not going to focus on the negative, but here's the deal. I don't want you to be a weathered branch. Who wants to be a withered branch? No takers? Come on now. Who wants to be burned in the fire? None of us. Now, I'm not just talking about hell here. I mean, Jesus might be speaking towards that, but I, I think he's talking about us that are connected. He wants us to remain connected so that we bear fruit. He doesn't want us to be fruitless. He wants us, listen, it's okay to be a fruity Christian, amen? It's okay. He wants us to bear fruit for him. So make sure we're connected so we don't wither away and we can bear effective, quality fruit for him. It says if we remain in him and his words remain in us, I want to talk about this for a minute. I've seen some Christians uh, lately on Facebook, e even some in the church here, even some in our church, but at large there's this confusion over the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. You know the Bible, you notice here Jesus said, if my words abide in you, he wants his word. Why do we lift the Word of God up? Because it's the Word of God. Now is this is not, listen, the Trinity is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But anytime somebody starts speaking in this type of terminology, the Holy Spirit told me to do that and it doesn't align with the Word of God, that's not the Holy Spirit. I want, you, I want to say that again. Everybody should say, come on, man, that's right, or amen. Anytime somebody says, well, the Holy Spirit's speaking to me to do this and it's, not, and it's against the Word of God, that's not the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit can never lead you to do something against the spoken Word of God. Now, we need to make sure then that when we remain in Him, it says His words abide in us too. So we obey His word. 
So how do we bear fruit? We also bear fruit because we know the Word of God. Because we know the truth. And the truth will set us free. So and Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So as we connect ourselves with Jesus, as we remain in Him and His words remain in us, we will bear fruit. As we remain in Jesus, He remains in us, and His words abide in us, we will bear fruit. And listen to what Jesus says with His words. God is glorified in this. God is glorified when you remain in Him. God is glorified when His words remain in you. God is glorified when we produce fruit. And listen to what Jesus says. When you do that, you prove to the world that you are my disciple. When you remain in Christ and He remains in you and His Word abides in you, you glorify the Father and then the world knows that we are disciples of Jesus Christ. The world needs our prophetic voice right now. The world may not know it. They've been tired of the 1980s and on where they got beat over the head with the Bible and the TV evangelist made all Christians look bad. And the world has taken away our voice. Let me tell you what, the world needs to hear the voice and we need to abide in Jesus because right now the world is in trouble. I want you to hear that. That means God wants to use you right now to be His voice. So I want to encourage you. Who do you need to share Jesus with? What's that friend you need to reach out to? Say, brother or sister, I love you. I haven't seen you in a while, not just because of COVID. You've just been disappearing. I need to see you back in the body of Christ. Where, where, who do you need to reach out? Do you need to be baptized? Listen, we're going to baptize in July. Jellyfish or no jellyfish, an evil, and whoever else will go in the water is going to get in there. Fred Hepler maybe makes sure there's no jellyfish. You up for it, an evil? An evil, you up for it? He's a little scared back there. Okay. So, tonight we're going to have an altar call right here. If you've not given your life to Jesus or you need to give your life to Jesus, if you don't belong in the vine and you need to belong in the vine, I'm going to be down here. I'll give you an elbow high five or a foot high five. Alright, if you need Jesus, I want you to say, I want to belong. I want to be one of the branches. I know I've been connected. Maybe, maybe you need to return to God. Maybe there's something in your life and you're like, I need to rededicate my life. Man, you make this, this hill right here. It can be an altar you can come pray on. And say, God, I, I know that, you know, I've kind of been squandering. I've not been bearing the fruit you've called me to do. I've kind of wasted what you've given me, but I'm going to come back and give you my life. Maybe you need to rededicate your life. And maybe you're somebody out there that's not letting me know that you need to be baptized. Maybe that's a decision you need to make tonight to say, I'm a follower of Jesus and I want to follow through the believers of baptism. Whoever that may be, however God's calling you, he wants you to be connected with Him. He is the vine. We are the branches. We are to remain in Him and He will remain in us. And His Word will abide in us. And it will cleanse us, it says. His Word will cleanse us. And then we will glorify the Father in all that we do. And we will bear much fruit. And they will know we are His disciples. Let's pray. Father God, as we come to this close... As we come to a moment to sing our final hymn, I want to ask the praise team just to come up and they can just start playing the music in the background and give people an opportunity to respond. And if anyone here in my voice needs to come and pray on the heel right here, just come on up and pray. Whether it's a rededication, if someone needs to make a decision to follow you, I pray that you'll give them the strength to come up today and acknowledge that, that they need to belong to you. Father God, if anyone needs to... To, to make a decision for baptism or whatever it may be that you're moving in their life. Lord, we pray right now that you'll move so that we will be your branches that are connected to you and you will remain in us and we will be in you. God, may you do your thing and may you be glorified in all that we do this night. In Jesus' name, amen. You come as the Lord leads you.
Every head down. Father God, as we, we thank you for those that have come forward already, and Lord, if there's anybody else, we just pray that you, you continue to move them throughout this song. And Lord, as we open our hearts to you, Lord, that we may be more connected to you. Lord, we thank you that you give us your promise that if we remain in you, you will remain in us. And Lord, we thank you that you promise us that your word will cleanse us. We thank you, God, that you tell us that You'll be glorified as we bear your fruit. So, Lord, may you call your people to respond in salvation and baptism and rededication. And, God, may we be a life-giving church that will bear much fruit for you. Lord, we pray that all the good we've done in the past will be nothing in comparison even to what you're going to do as you continue to prune us and make us the church you want us to do. May we constantly be in your hands. And Father, may you constantly take care of us and garden us and prune us and grow us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we sing, I'm going to stay up here. If anybody else needs to respond, you respond. Go ahead and let's sing this song together. not done but come on up here James we're going to sing another we got some more verses we can sing right all right after this so hey this is James <laughs> listen man he's the crazy guy that has the Christian flag and the American flag and he's the girls for glory guy amen, amen. so anyway um James before this all started gave his life to Jesus <laughs> a amen and there's another person out here, Herman, that's, that's committed. And Herman gave his life to Jesus too before this began. And hey, I'm going to call you out. Ian, where you at, Ian? Where's he at? Ian, where you at, man? Was he hiding? He's hiding by his grill? Oh, he's on the phone. Okay. And Ian gave his life to Jesus during digital worship. So but James is coming up. He's like, hey, man, you were talking to me. And I need you to come up here. So... He's one of my baptism victims, I mean, baptism candidates, um, that's going to get baptized with jellyfish and no jellyfish, amen? Amen. And he's already, he's already kind of made some fun at the pastor, so he's, he's earned a couple extra seconds under the water. <laughs> so anyway, if we rejoice with James making this decision to follow Jesus and be baptized, say amen. Amen. You're stuck with us now, bro. All right, amen. All right, there you go. So uh, I know you can't, normally we come up and hug, but we're not going to do that today. So air hug, there you go. So he will be up here if you want to come talk to him, or I'll tell you better yet, you can meet him over there at the Christian flag, and you can congratulate him before you leave tonight and just uh, tell him how proud you are of him. So uh, anyway, let's, let's go ahead. We're going to sing one more verse, and we're done. Let me say the blessing over you now. And I just want to say it's good to see you, and I'm excited to be here and worship with you. It's good to see your faces. May Lord God bless you and keep you. May cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Go in Jesus' name. Amen. Sing one more verse. God bless you. Lord. Thank you. 